Welcome or welcome back to the channel, you lovely lot. If you have not seen my face before, you have no idea who I am, hello. My name is Erica, it is a pleasure to have you joining me on this channel on YouTube because you may be a bit more familiar with my face if you are coming from my ancient history YouTube channel that is called Moan Inc. But over here, I've decided to upload all of my book reviews about the books and series that really shouldn't be over on Moan Inc. because they're mostly fantasy books. They are mostly uh, just, you know, little love stories and whatever, things that I read in my spare time. And luckily a lot of these have had links to the ancient world. So I've uploaded longer reviews over there, not necessarily personal reviews, but more so like diving into the fantasy worlds and kind of passing out, you know, what's similar and what can you guys take from it and all of that kind of stuff. And that is the case with the book that we are going to be discussing today. Because as you can see from the title, we will be chatting all things Throne of Glass. But before we can get into that, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you know every single time I post in the future. And now that you've so kindly done that, let's get into the video. So as I said at the start, I do have a longer video about Throne of Glass. It is more so discussing all of the ancient history nods because there are a lot throughout this series. And I really just kind of did a quick fire video of all the things that you can find in, you know, each individual book going through the series of you know what are things that are clearly inspired by the ancient world or what are things that have directly taken their name from the ancient world who are they do they add to the story do they not add to the story etc etc here i'm just gonna be talking about my personal opinions of throne of glass so before we can do that i'm just going to read the blurb of the first book to give everybody a little bit of a flavor before we start diving in and i can talk to you about the progression of the series how i found it uh, and all of that fun stuff so the blurb in the land without magic, an assassin is summoned to the castle. Kalina? Kalina, is that how we're saying it? I read it that way the entire time. Uh, so that's what I'm going to say. But <laughs> if you're coming here and you know how it should be pronounced, I haven't looked up any interviews of Sarah J Maas saying this name. It was stupid of me. But if you guys know if I'm doing it correctly or incorrectly, please let me know in the comments so I can correct myself because otherwise this is like incredibly embarrassing. But I am gonna just be saying Kalina for, for now. So Kalina Sardothian, has no love for the vicious king who rules from his throne of glass, but she has not come to kill him. She has come to win her freedom. If she defeats 23 murderers, thieves, and warriors in a deadly competition, she will be released from prison to serve as the king's champion. But something rotten dwells in the castle, and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying mysteriously, one by one, Kalina's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival, launching her onto a desperate quest to root out the evil before it destroys her world and the people she has come to love. So this is the first book. Throne of Glass is the first book in the series. We then move into the book that you see behind me, which is called Crown of Midnight and so on and so forth. I read this series really because after I read Akatar, the internet bullied me into reading this series. Not seriously, I was, you know, very okay with being bullied. I was getting all of these messages from my friends and from people who had loved uh, Akatar as well, who said to me, look, okay, if you liked Akatar, read Throne of Glass, like get to it. And I don't want to talk to you until you've done it. So I went out to go and buy Throne of Glass and I bought the first book. And unsurprisingly, I was very, very taken by this story. As you guys heard, the the plot is really intriguing. It is very, very high fantasy in regards to the world. I mean, the world building is insane. The magic system is insane. We learn about the magic system much, much more uh, throughout the series as uh, the magic kind of loosens on the realm. But the world itself is so intriguing and so fascinating. And the story of this assassin is absolutely brilliant. I was really taken by the first book so much that I bought the second book and the third book. And I just was down this total rabbit hole for about a month of just reading this story and trying to figure out as well how it all fit together because maybe I am not as smart as the average reader, I don't know. I am always at the beck and call and the mercy of a writer. I want to read things in publication order. I want to kind of be on the same journey as the characters. And I tend to be quite a dumb reader in that way, that whatever the author is telling me, I will believe it. I'm just like, oh, okay, we're going here. Even if the story is going somewhere else, I don't like to really guess ahead. And I could not guess 
ahead for this year. I literally, aside from it being a happy ending at the end of it, I had no idea where this was going, how we were gonna unpack everything. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the ride. Now I do wanna talk a little bit more in depth about the series. So if you haven't read the series, I would advise that you click off the video now because I won't be able to control my tongue. I absolutely never can. So I'm giving you a warning now that if you're coming to this because you've read the series and you're like, I wonder what Erica thinks, keep watching. If you have not read the series and that blurb really intrigued you, go buy it and then come back later. Because when it comes to the rest of the series, let's start with the order. I read the order of publication. So I started with Throne of Glass, I then read Crown of Midnight, and then I read Assassin's Blade. Let's just start with those three. I did not see Kalina being Aelin. Maybe I'm stupid, genuinely. I, I thought about that. <laughs> when I was reading, I was like, how did I not put these two stories together? In hindsight, it seems ridiculous that I didn't. I know loads of people did. I didn't. So when that reveal came up, I was like, yo, what? She's who? I mean, genuinely, I was so, so hooked by that. And even more so, I liked the idea of Sam and the storyline of Sam being a bit mysterious throughout the first two books, that we only kind of get a little bit of a flavor of... Sam of Aelin and Kalina. This is always the problem that when you're talking about it, you're like, now which name do I use? We're just gonna use Aelin. So Aelin's previous boyfriend, her previous little like love um, in Sam. I liked the idea that he was a bit of a mystery until we got to Assassin's Blade. Genuinely, that love story in Assassin's Blade was so pure and so beautiful. It was probably controversially, my favorite love story in the book. It was Sam and Kalina when she first starts, you know, off at the keep and, and then meeting and then falling in love. It was so pure and you could really tell that Sam just absolutely loved her to the death. The decisions that he made, oh my God, literally to the death. Ah! The decisions that he made were so, so love fueled the entire time. It's the one time that Kalina like stuck to a plan and that scene, you guys, where she crawls onto the table after hearing that he's died and she crawls onto the table with him and just weeps, broke my heart. Oh my goodness. I was near screaming at the book. I was like, what kind of a psychopath writes this scene, but also write it again. Like I, lo I loved it. I just thought that Sam was such an elite character and that storyline was so beautiful as one of Aelin's many, many ghosts um, throughout the story. I love, I just, I think that the Sam storyline trumped so many of the other love storylines in the book because it was so, you know, without having the, the forces of their being mates or all of that kind of stuff, the love story was really allowed to grow by itself and kind of be organic and to know there wasn't something that was really weighing on it like that just made it such a joy and such a pleasure to read. I am, I know that we're not supposed to pick teams because there are no teams in this book, but I am such a team Sam kind of girl. Like when I hear people who were like, Rowan this, Rowan that, I'm like, yeah, Rowan's great, but can we, can we talk about Sam a bit more, please? So why don't we just stick with love interests then since I've brought it up and then I'll talk a little bit more about some other things. But when it comes to the love interests, I just mentioned that Rowan is great. He's obviously great. Here is our quintessential romantic hero. He does even the classic, you know, when like Aelin leads forward in the tub, he's like, who did this to you? When looking at her scars, it is all very, very tropey and it delivers. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, in a good way. You know, when he says those things, even I was like, tell him, do it. You know, like I was totally, totally down for the ride. I loved Rowan's backstory. I thought he was a really fabulous, character to include. And I was even more intrigued that Sarah J Mass I saw on, on TikTok that she had actually intended for Rowan to just be not a love interest, but just a mentor for, for Aelin. And then obviously as she kept writing, she was like, oh shit, there seems, seems to be some chemistry going on here. And to know that Dorian was supposed to be her mate in the first idea of, of the series, I thought was fascinating because I loved the Dorian and Kalina banter. I didn't really like their relationship. I thought their relationship, it wasn't going to work. Like I couldn't see them being together, which is probably why, you know, they didn't end up together, but I loved their friendship. I loved their connection because it was so clear throughout the whole series 
obviously then when we get to the last book, that they had this really, really strong connection. I thought that was done really beautifully from the beginning. Like you can see them getting along and you can see them like zinging. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that, but you can see them, uh, you know, doing that together. And I, I really, really loved that side and I loved unpacking that with them. Her relationship obviously with Kale made much more sense to have these two warriors connect. It was nothing compared to Sam and Kaylina, obviously, absolutely nothing. But I understood why Kale and her would connect because they're both warriors and they understand that sacrifice. Obviously Kaylina understands a lot more of the mental side of things than he does yet, but I really liked seeing them get together. And then obviously when you find out who she is, I was like, oh, as if she's gonna stay with Kale. And then she meets Rowan and you're like, Kale who? Kale? Who? Dorian's arc, uh, you know, going from Kaylina to Mano or Manon. How are we saying her name? Here's the problem. Okay, side digression. I have uh, my uncle's ex-girlfriend who has that name and she is French. And she told us to call her Mano because she was like, you're not gonna get it. This is like the closest. And then one of my friends has a French friend who has that name as well. And she tells everyone, oh, just call me Manon. I then Googled how to say it in the French accent. It's a beautiful name, but I also won't be able to do it in a French accent. So I don't know how we are going to pronounce her. You guys can let me know which one you've chosen because currently it's me and my friend Raven who were like, which one are we settling on? But either way, uh, this, this beautiful witch that shows up in Dorian's life, I loved her character. Let's start with that. I thought she was a bad bitch because she was such an interesting character. She's such a complex character. I mean, with all of her witches and, you know, with her family uh, as well. Did I love so much the ending of the witches? No. Did I think it was a brilliant ending for the witches? Yes. So on that front, what I am saying is even though it was heartbreaking to watch all of that happen, it was necessary and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I thoroughly enjoyed watching her and Dorian spar with each other. Like they didn't really have banter. They really were sparring the entire time that they were talking to one another. And even at the end where she's trying to get him to stay. Honestly, I loved that storyline. The last couple that we have to speak about on a romantic level, I loved Lorcan and Elodie. However, <laughs> you guys, my controversial opinion, I think that Lorcan should have died. Okay, hear me out, hear me out. We did not have a really big death aside from Adian's dad, which was a really big death, don't get me wrong. I thought that was a really fantastic death and the fact that he never really got that chance to make amends properly with Adian. We never really got to see them have like a father and son sort of situation but he sacrificed himself in the correct way for the story, I thought was a really big death, but a, a good death. And we did have a number of other characters die, but Lorcan was in the perfect spot to die. And I was like, this would have been the most tragic death. And I would have cried my eyes out and it would have been spectacular. And I would have been like, what an incredible writer. It's that part where they are like running away from the battlefield. Elodie gets on the horse to go and get Lorcan. They're on the horse. And as they're riding back, when the dams are about to break and Lorcan's like, I am too heavy for this horse. I need to get off this horse. And he tells Elodie how much he loves her, how sorry he is for everything. And then Aelin comes down and saves the day. And it bothered me because I was like, if Lorcan had fallen off that horse, as Elodie is literally saying, hey, I made you this promise. I'm always gonna come for you. Like, don't joke with me. And it's that that moment where they kind of bridge that gap. They've had those big fights and all of that. Oh, he just, I feel like he should have fallen off and it would have been absolutely tragic and it would have broken Elodie into a million pieces, but it would have been an incredible piece of writing. And I know that's controversial to say. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, what the hell are you talking about? You hope that he would, this is just my internal monologue and I just want people to know that. Now this video is already incredibly long, so we're gonna keep it short. Loved Adian's character, loved his relationship with Lysandra. Honestly, could have read a whole book about them. Thought they were beautiful. Thought what Adian had to go through in order to get to Lysandra. Loved the first time that he like declares that he loves her, where he's kind of like, I'm gonna marry you. I was like, stop it, I'm obsessed with you. So I do wanna have a bit of a longer talk with people, I guess in private more so, because this video is already incredibly long about Rowan and his past story about how Maeve really, you know, screwed him over with that, gave him all this trauma for 
the reason of fucking up Aelin's life, right? Like that's literally why Maeve did it. That I thought was done incredibly well, but I guessed it. And the reason why I guessed it is because I knew that mates was a thing because I had read Akatar um, and it was so obvious like so obvious that they were going to be mates and that there was going to be some sort of fudged history when it came to Lyra, Lyria. But I knew there was going to be some sort of fudged history. So I was prepared for that. And uh, having that come out though, at the, the pace that it did, I loved it. I didn't actually guess that Maeve had constructed it. I thought that it was going to be um, more so like an, an ill-fated thing, kind of like what was mentioned in Akatar. I thought that it was going to kind of be like a this isn't a real mate, sometimes it's wrong sort of a thing and this is the time that it's wrong. No, it was just Maeve being a bitch and I thought that was done beautifully well because uh, it made me hate her. Now also, <laughs> Aelin being put in the box, I gotta say, I know that people are like, oh, that was horrible to read and whatever. That was fantastic plotting. It was horrible to read her go through that, but she needed it. And I really felt like the story needed me to, well, needed Sarah even to tug me to hell and back. And going through that with Aelin, I was like, when will this end? In a good way, right? In the way that Aelin is feeling it, where she's like, when will this end? I, I thought that was done fantastically well. Um, I couldn't have picked a better, <laughs> it's gonna sound so fucked. Couldn't have picked a better torture method. Like genuinely, I just thought that it was beautiful through and through. The whole storyline, what I'm trying to tell you, the whole storyline, I think, Every single little plot point that we were taken through, I think was done so perfectly. I think it was paced really perfectly. I think the world building was out of this world. Genuinely, I thought that that the way this whole realm is structured is absolutely fantastic. The magic systems were brilliant. I loved really getting sticky with them. And uh, I, I, I totally get the hype. I totally, totally get the hype because even though I don't feel like I have an Akatar hangover with this series, it is still one that I'm thinking about. It is still one that I'm like, wow, that was brilliantly done. And like, sometimes I'll be sitting around like by myself and I'll think back to a detail where I'm like, oh, that was so smart. So because this is so long, I am gonna wrap it up. But obviously uh, if you were, you know, still around, it means that you've read it. I don't have to recommend the book to you, but I do wanna know your personal opinions. What haven't I mentioned? What do you think was done really well? What are some other points that you wanna talk about? Please leave them in the comments. I would love to have a little bit of a chit chat down there, get more of a, a throne of glass family hanging out and chit chatting for other people to uh, join into. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be seeing you next time with more reviews here on the channel. I'll see you then.